I think I stole my baby. The X-ray specs. Greatest show <laughs> I've ever been on, and you are now officially my hero of television. Magic, Mister Liftoff. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> For the first half of the 1990s, five nights a week, over 800 hours, a television institution ruled the airwaves. It had a name that made grown men weep. And that name was Tonight Live with Steve Vizard. International stars beat a path to Steve's hallowed desk. Now one of those guests has gone on to her own brilliant career. And tonight, she's here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, two-time Gold Logie winner, Miss Georgie Parker. Hello, everybody, and welcome. For the next 90 minutes, we're going to revisit Tonight Live with Steve Izard. Now, Steve didn't want to come on here at the top of the show and say that Tonight Live was the greatest Tonight Show in the history of television, that it pushed the envelope, broke new ground, and will always live in legend. He's far too modest and self-effacing for that, so he asked me to say it for him. Steve began his performing career in the 70s doing impressions of that other Tonight Show host, Don Lane. Oh. I nearly didn't get here tonight. I got whiplash. My beads got caught in the revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is... Steve Vizard. And almost 15 years later, he got to take home the gold Logie as himself. Steve Vizard, gold Logie winner. Before Tonight Live began, Steve had gained great popularity on Fast Forward impersonating TV hosts of the day. <laughs> thanks, uh, Graham. Thanks, John. George Danikian here at the news desk. <laughs> I'm Darren Hunch. That's life. <laughs> so when the Seven Network asked him to do an irreverent and late-night talk show with only four weeks' notice, he looked for inspiration to his heroes, Don Lane, Bert Newton, Johnny Carson, and particularly... As some were to notice, David Letterman. Really don't mind admitting with only four weeks' notice to go, we didn't mind stealing from anybody. Years of Tonight Live were fantastic fun. In fact, I think back on all the ridiculous things we got up to and can't believe we got paid for it. And I look at this house and figure we must have gotten paid for it. Things did go wrong, and when they did, we loved it. Now, the weather is to be presented by three members of the spectacular Georgian State Dance Company. <laughs> involves knives and the gentlemen do not speak a word of English. <clears throat> How's your Russian, Gareth? Non-existent. Niet. Niet. <laughs> Brisbane, 28 degrees and fine. <laughs> Brisbane. <laughs> oh, I thought that was a good throw. Sydney, 25 degrees, early showers. Uh, Joe, could you ask Joe a question? Well, I can talk for him. All right, if you, could, ah. if you could act as an interpreter here, Tiny. <laughs> right. Uh, could you uh, tell Joe that uh, he's, a, um, he's uh, very effeminate looking and, uh, <laughs> and uh, that uh, I don't like the colour of his suit? If you could just pass that on to Joe for us. Oh, if I tell him that, <laughs> he might fly to Australia real quick. No, I'm only, could you ask Joe what he's doing at the moment? Yeah, uh, Mr. Vizor wants to know what you're doing at the moment. Well, as of now, I just uh, train the boys and I have one of the guys fighting and run the gymnasium he, and go wherever I uh, he like He's to training see. the boys and... <laughs> is he, tell me who he thinks is, uh, who he thinks is the real heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, uh, Mr. Vizor wants to know who do you think the real heavyweight champion of the world is today? Well, as of now, we have to go with Buster Douglas because... Uh, he beat Tyson, so we had to go along with that. He believes... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the champion. 
Adelaide 33. Do you know where Adelaide is? They don't speak English. Okay, what about Perth? What about Vladivostok? <laughs> Alice Springs 34. And <laughs> When Reagan was in office, it was too easy. I mean, he made, he was the world's largest living Muppet, so that was easy to talk about. What Things you... like that. Sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting you all the time, but it's fun. But uh... That's all right, it's great on a two-second delay. This is like having sex in a wind tunnel. Everything comes back. <laughs> Perth. 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 Perth, uh, 27 and 5. <laughs> Four fine and hot. <laughs> Alice Springs, it's the middle, guys. <laughs> middle. <laughs> Are you ready, Merv? Well, I think so. It's ready to live a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. A, indeed a great pleasure to talk to you. Were, you were indeed a child uh, prodigy. Not anymore. <laughs> what age did you actually start playing the uh, piano? Uh, what did I what? Play the piano. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> what age to actually start playing? Uh, the, piano, the piano, yes. This is, uh, this is your, um, this is... <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Crack one. <laughs> Sorry about that, Bruce. Um... <laughs> Whereas you, Dolph, would work out pretty much, what, every day? Yeah. That's my water, Dolph. Please leave it alone. <laughs> Shit. Fight, fight, oh, fight, God. fight, 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 oh, Come on, oh, Miss Kite. <laughs> Move your legs. <laughs> Are you <What>? kidding? <laughs> Move the legs. Move your legs? Dude, I've got to explain something to you. I'm not real! Jennifer <laughs> says, Move your legs. Look, I'm going to the ground out here. Sort of was a girl, uh, one couldn't afford to, to have really pretty things because they were all much too expensive, so you ran them up at home. Do you make your own clothes now? No, no, no. Not now, no, no. I... Yeah. I, I do still, but it's not... <laughs> um, what questions are you asked most often? How big is it? <laughs> and, um... Why? <laughs> And does it hurt? <laughs> and and uh, are you really that funny at home? And it relates, that, that last question relates to the first three questions. <laughs> Do you trash rooms, for example? I try not to, just, you know, because it's... I mean, that's just... I, I just don't think that's too cool, you know what I mean? Like, one time I took a shrimp and threw it at the wall, but that was like... <laughs> that was like five years ago, and I don't know, it was... It's four o'clock in the morning, and I was watching TV, and there was some shrimp there. And, and the wall was I over there. Throw it at the wall like that. Like, uh, <laughs> but that was the only time. I mean, you know, and I cleaned it up and everything. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> it's hardly a big bad rock and roller. You cleaned up the shrimp on the wall. And... Well, yeah. I, I was hungry, so I had to clean it up and eat it. Tell uh, them the records. Uh, smell the glove wasn't a great success. Well, they, they threatened to sue us for lack of talent. Yeah. <laughs> You see, we had, a, we had a, a contract with Polymer Records not to record. <laughs> it, it was an, ex, an exclusive contract not to record. So they paid us good money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when MCA came along and said, we'd like you to record, that was all right. If they'd said, we don't want you to record, that would have been a conflict of interest. You can't not record for two, for two labels at the same time. <laughs> right. Our comedy act tonight is only six months old on the comedy circuit and already... A hit. Would you please welcome Eric Banner? Yeah. 
And if you're lucky enough, you'll meet the big idiot out of the bunch and he'll walk up and say, hey, you talk great English, man. <laughs> what language do you guys speak back home? <laughs> That's when it's good to have a mate stand next and you go, nigga mana go mana. Yes, Can you explain this? Get the, uh, the cover of uh, me, Vogue Men, but it's the look. It's got that... that get Vogue. me out of here! Do the Vogue, give us a Vogue look. Give us a Vogue look. Go on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Do they do a lot of shots before they get that right, you know? Yeah, well, they try and dress you up in all these sort of, you know, silly clothes, and they, they, they sort of lie to you all the time. They say, we won't, like, you know, we won't... Whatever you do, we won't bring anything that's going to make you look stupid. And you get there and they say, now, here's the bolero trousers. <laughs> and uh, a little red thing that goes around your neck. <laughs> it's like, get off me. I brought a mate along with me tonight. I, hmm? I think you, you probably know this fellow. This is uh, Yorick. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I got him in tonight. He's actually uh, used to play that uh, yeah. thing. He's not quite life-size. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You, sh no, you just should see some of our producers' normal. heads. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you know how difficult it is uh, just to get a little head? I mean, it's... it's I don't uh... know. Well, yeah. <laughs> have you been in pantos in England? Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, no. oh yes, you have. Oh, no, oh, no, no, we haven't. haven't. Oh, yes, you have. Behind you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's all of that. Yeah, it's done a couple of those. Did you? Yeah, yeah. What, what ones did you do? I actually, I've done Cinderella twice. Um, both times, uh, never actually got the chance to play Cinderella. Hopefully next time I will. Well, it's, I think it's one of those um, career things you work towards. Yeah, absolutely. One time I was, uh, I was interviewing Dermot Brereton and it was only a single shot on myself and, uh, of course, I'm just standing and I came up and, yes, welcome to the Hawthorne Football Club and uh, I suppose the only way of saying it is that uh, Dermot Squirrel gripped me and uh, it was a little bit hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> like that. And I kept going for a while and as I turned from, the, from talking to Dermot... To the back to the camera over here, there was uh, Bertie Dippier Domenico standing starkers, and I thought I found a missing link all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, any questions you'd like to ask Jennifer? Uh, uh, well, there is, there is a couple, but probably not on national television. I was wondering. Uh, oh, I give it a rest, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> was there a casting couch situation? I mean, did you? Have... I was from North Melbourne and. We haven't got any real high-profile players from North Melbourne, so, you know, they whacked a bit of makeup on me and <laughs> come up all right, so <laughs> they whacked me up on the cover. And, uh, did you have to think about it? Did you think, uh, you know, am I being used, am I a piece of meat? Oh, I don't think we're a piece of meat. I mean, there was good money in it. And, um... <laughs> I'm not saying a cheap piece of meat, I mean... <laughs> and I think people thought they had me pegged with those last two albums, uh, the people that send me songs and... They said, oh, we know what he's going to... We'll know what he's going to do this time. And they sent me a lot of I love you, you don't love me songs. Mm -hmm. and, oh, uh, so you got them? Oh, I got those. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, I, I noticed that they don't appear on the album a lot. No, it's not one of yours, on it. It's no big deal. Anyway, anyway, John, you know, all the best with the, the album and the whole shit. Thanks, man. Uh, I hope it goes well. That's two shits and an arse on this. Shit you. Shit you. So, anyway, we were picking you up. It's fun, isn't it? No, it's great. I get to do it's this great to be able to swear on a telly. You've been in school now, what, 18 months? Sorry, 15. 15. 15 months, OK. Mm. So, uh, have you found that people's kind of, like, attitude to you has changed at all? Um, well, everybody sort of knows who you are, I guess. Yeah. And points and everything. But, I mean, as far as my friends go, mm. nothing's changed. Now, you used to work in a chemist shop, did you not? I absolutely did. Did people come in and ask for interesting items in the chemist shop? You mean like condoms? Well, say, yeah, say. Actually, that was always a big joke. There was a... We were three girls that worked in this chemist shop up at Linfield where I grew up. I was mm -hmm. about, I don't know, 14, 15. And the guys used to come in and they used to say, can I pick a condom, please? And you say, beg your pardon? And they'd say, can I pick a condom, please? <laughs> and they say, I can't hear you. Condoms. Oh, sure. What size would you like? Small, medium or large? Because they came in three, six and nine and they'd uh -huh. look down and they'd say, medium? <laughs> <laughs> invariably, invariably, everyone said medium. Never any smalls? Never any smalls. Never any larges either, unfortunately. <laughs> Can I just check, please? That's OK. It's OK. Look, 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 look. I just wonder why you kept moving your seat backwards and forwards all the time. I wonder what's <laughs> 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 Baby, I've been watching you. 
Baby, baby, I've been watching you. That's it. Watching everything you do. Oh, forget it. I can't even find a key anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> baby, I've been watching you. You didn't do this to me, did you? Do watching this to me? everything you do. He, he finds a key. Yes. That's a, let me, oh, my God. Wait a minute. You are a very privileged man, let me tell you. I'm going to allow you to do something that only I have ever been able to do. Not the hair. In about, yes, yes. Do I get to kiss Bert? No, you get to touch the hair. Try it. Yes. Do you think? Try it. You may break a finger. <laughs> Should you announce it now or not? Hang on a sec. Wait a minute. Uh, no. The lousy bastards. That's my carpet from last year. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken my car parking spot. He's taken my dressing room. He's taken my floor manager. How are you finding Patty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, uh, yeah, just, oh, look, isn't he a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man? That's, that's Kerry Packer, one of the true geniuses, not only of Australia, <laughs> but of the world. Look, he... Look, he... I want you to cut that bit out of the bloody show and do it quickly, son. <laughs> and bring me a beer. All your knees. Oh, no, 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 no. This, no. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is his brother Clyde here, Clyde Packer. <laughs> I own a couple of magazines over in America now, and they're really, really great. They've yeah, done well, the old Packer boys. Oh, yeah. Oh. I think the most memorable team we featured on tonight, Lai, would have to be rugby league giant Rex the Moose Mossop and the flamboyant, um, which is 90 speak for gay, Comedian Julian Clary. Would you please welcome <laughs> Rex Mossop? Just, um, now Rex, uh, the, the, uh, there wasn't a big handshake there for Julian, is there a... Uh, you don't like the outfit? What's the question? You don't like the outfit. I'm waiting for some questions to do with you what I... You don't like the outfit, Rex. What's the like? <laughs> Which are, are the colours? Do you uh, like my, my Dr Martin boots here? Because I, I used to wear stiletto heels, but I, I thought that's a bit effeminate, really. <laughs> What do you think of it when uh, when cricketers uh, kiss each other on the uh, on the on the cricket ground? Who, Merv Hughes, for instance. Merv Hughes, for example. I think it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> You'd know a bit about that. <laughs> when would you find a man attractive? I would never find a man attractive. <laughs> what do you think of uh, people who are homosexuals, uh, Rex? I don't think about people that are homosexuals. <laughs> But uh, we don't think about Rex either. <laughs> what particular thing about homosexuals don't you like, Rex? I just don't think about them. They don't exist as far as I'm concerned. The gay Mardi Gras. Look, I'm not interested in that. I don't want to talk about it and I refuse to talk about it's it. Now, you, would you like me to leave right now? It's an event of life. Do we want Rex to leave at this point in time? <laughs> well, I'll ask some sensible questions. Would you ever go in the gay Mardi Gras? <laughs> Come down here to publicise that. That's all I came down for. The moose, the, the moose that roared. It's a good read. Buy it. Now, what are we going to do next? You ever been grabbed on the nuts? Uh... I have, yes. <laughs> oh, Not affectionately, terrible, this, doesn't it? <laughs> would, you ever, would you ever, under any circumstance, ever wear an outfit like that, Rex? There's no point in asking, Steve. He won't even look at me. So he's not going to wear would, an outfit. I, I, would you wear an outfit like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, would you ever, no. under any circumstance? Absolutely not. Never. I've answered the question. 
Have a look at this, Rex. I did that for a bit. <laughs> Saints were too good for us in the big one. I contributed to the thrashing by throwing a loose pass that was intercepted. Now, what's a loose pass, do you think? <laughs> Meet me in the showers? <laughs> big boy, is that a... <laughs> do you think... It's marvellous. Do you think the, 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 uh, the book will do well in the gay community, uh, Rex? Oh, it'll be a sensation in the gay community, yes. Well, you just need to look at the cover to tell. <laughs> And the last I heard, Rex and Julian had bought a townhouse at Noosa together and they're growing avocados. always seem to be having fights with the network. I remember one occasion uh, we suggested tampering with a poster of Darren Hinch in the studio car park. We really, at that point, ran the risk of being axed. Mount Rushmore, <laughs> you've got the Pyramid of Cheops, the Sphinx, and the 100-foot Darren Hinch poster. <laughs> Have you ever actually modified a poster of this size before? No. No, I've never had the pleasure. I did a chapel or two in Rome, but never uh -huh. anything the like that. good work, what they took the three or four years. Yeah. Cliff, how's it going up there? Uh, it's going up uh, very well, uh, Steve. Uh, this is not to be taken lightly. I'm taking this pretty seriously. Hey, uh, you, on the camera. He wants a shot of the picture. <laughs> And my recollection is the network executives were not happy campers when they arrived at work the following day. In fact, it was a miracle we survived. But hey, we were into miracles at Tonight Live. Here's proof. We, Tonight Live and the Australian Television Network, Channel 7, <laughs> give you a money-back guarantee <laughs> that we will have rain falling... How long was it, Sintara, roughly? Um, about three seconds. Three seconds? <laughs> I'm actually planning as my hardest to uh, make rain fall in Neil. Uh, these, these are, the, of course, the initial preparations, Sintaro. What are you doing? I'm just trying to melt the belt, the butter. When the butter melts... <laughs> Why don't you move the brick closer to the fire? <laughs> Sintaro, how's it going? Steven, it's getting really hot. <laughs> 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 so the object is rain, not melting the butter. They wanted rain. <laughs> it is raining in mill. <laughs> no. Is this, 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 we're not mucking around here. This is real rain. Kuraya, kuraya. Kuraya, Sintaro, is it actually raining? That is rain. You see live, Steve Pfizer. This is live rain on national television. Sintaro. Glenn Robbins has got into a microlight, one of those very small aircraft, and he's taken off above uh, Blenheim Palace to get aerial shots of this magnificent palace. Glenn, can you receive me? Uh, yes, Steve. Uh, am I coming in OK? Is this the first time you've been in a microlight? Back in, back in economy. Some, just something's just blowing off there. Is, is that your? Are you wearing a scarf? Uh, I'm not sure. Actually, Steve, we've got a couple. I'm not sure what's happening, but we've got a couple of problems. I think something's caught around a prop or something. Can you see anything? Yeah, we can see it. Just looked like a scarf or something. You okay? Oh, we're fine. We're fine. Hang on a sec. Uh, apparently, we're going. We're just going to actually make a landing soon because the uh, we've got a couple of engine problems. Oh, quick, oh, Glenn Robbins has just come back from the microlight. And in fact, what happened was his scarf, yeah. scarf there it is there. His scarf <laughs> got yeah. caught in the propeller and the, and the, the plane stopped. Yes, it did. Crash landing. Is that you? Is that something or what? That's that. something, boy. Yeah, now we can get a really good shot of Jennifer Kite from here, Steve. Let's just see if we can pick up Jennifer Kite. Oh. That's, uh, that's Jennifer Kite. Now, that's the shot, Elvira, Mistress of the Night. Now, <laughs> Have a look at that. I have seen that on video covers and not in the normal part of the shop. Elvira. Steve, be careful. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. This is uh, Ash.
Ashley Zanka, who's a professional um, window cleaner. Hi. Uh, does he come from a long line of Zankers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's had some fairly weird things happen on, you know, looking through windows and stuff, Steve. What sort of things happen, Ashley? Oh, one time um, I was cleaning a window on a flat and I saw two girls in bed pretty late in the day. They looked as though they were enjoying themselves. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, they apparently cleaned the window for about four hours, Steve. <laughs> Just below us here, there is a light on, and we... we Can we go down and have a look in? Yeah. We, <laughs> Press the button, Ashley. It's going down. We're going down now. We think there might be someone working back or something, and I'm not sure, but... Yes, there is. There's a woman there. Can we, Can you see can we have a look through? Yeah, Where are we in the building, this Ashley? 50, this is level 51. 51. Uh, she can't see us, though, because the windows... <laughs> <are> <laughs> So she doesn't know we're here. She doesn't know we're here. <laughs> what's, what's, the, uh, what's level 51? Level 51 is Mallison Stephen Jakes. It's a company that's here in the Rialto Towers. Tony, get the number with We'll give her a tingle. <laughs> All right, look, it's Steve Vizard here. You're on national television. Uh, are you are you in uh, the Hello? the office at the moment? Uh, who's speaking? Sorry. It's Steve Vizard. You're on national television. You, your uh, name is. My name's Alana Atlas. And you're with uh, Mallison's. That's right. Yeah. Uh, look, I've got a legal problem. Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> Alana. <laughs> get Hello. Can you just look out your window? Yeah. There's a have a can you go up to the window? Right. There's a guy called Ashley who's been hanging out there all day. <laughs> waiting for you to undress. Hi. We're just going to knock on some doors <laughs> and uh, get into someone's house and find out what they're in fact watching. Hello? Oh, hello there. Good eye. How do you do? There you go. Uh, good evening, sir. My name's Steve Weiser. Let me say this is live on television throughout Australia. Oh, I'm watching you. There you go. You're watching me! <laughs> uh, you uh, do what for a living? Uh, not a hell of a lot, actually. <laughs> are, are you involved in, what, transport or...? Used to be. I fell off a road train up in the north. <laughs> <laughs> The profile of our average viewer. Hello. Gary, can we just have a look around the pad? Is yeah, any problem with that? Well, here's, here's Let's have a look around Gary's pad. Here's my favourite bull. Sorry? Here's my favourite bull. <laughs> Gary, uh... That's where I rest my leg. Sorry, mate? That's where I rest my leg after I fell off the truck. Right. <laughs> We need someone to distinguish between a stripper and an erotic dancer. Would you just watch this act, please? Will you watch the boys perform for one second and we can get can we get your professional opinion? Yeah, looking good. A kitchen area, Gary? Yeah, that's uh, it, over there. The it's fridge. <laughs> yeah. My microwave for us uh, divorcees, you know. Micro you microwave? Yeah. From, from where did you say? For, for us divorcees, you know, chuck our pizzas. Are oh, you a divorcee? Yeah, been there, done that, yeah. <laughs> did she leave you before or after you fell off the road train, yeah? Well, before, mate. Before? Yeah, I used to throw the leg then, but I can't... Let's... <laughs> I'm not even going to risk the bedroom, Gary. Uh, I think, um... Don't you want to have a look at me, Yabo yeah, stuff? You what? Well, me Yabo yeah, stuff. <laughs> yeah, right, mate. No look, uh, Gary, it's, it's been a real thrill, but... Uh, <laughs> Gary, uh, we'll, um, we'll... Back, back. 
Is that from Arnhem Land, Gary? No, no. We'll put the, uh, we'll put the National uh, Museum in touch with you because <laughs> you've obviously got some fairly, uh, fairly good stuff there. Thanks for letting us into your house, Gary. We're going to take an air break. <laughs> How much older are you supposed to be than Mike? No, I don't know. They keep... They keep, they keep sorry. They keep... You're um, right. You're right? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, I'm not really. I'm sorry. I just feel a bit funny. I'm sorry about that. You're feeling cruel? Well, just a bit funny. Are you yeah. all right? No, Honestly. no, no, no. It's OK. You've got a gut ache or something? Yeah, just a bit of a funny in the tummy. Maybe I should get a bucket. No, no. <laughs> We've never had anyone be sick on the show before. Hi, girls. Yeah. Yeah, this is really no, no, it's no big deal, really. It's no problem. Here it is now. And this is the actual uh, Channel 7 sick bay. I don't really know. Really really Christopher, Christopher had this put in. Fantastic. Christopher's face. Oh, yeah. Please. I don't need this. Honestly, it's no big deal. I can undress myself. Thank you. Jump up there, girls. Could you look up the penis? Yes, there's some things there that I've only seen. Don't take care. You know, that's the most important thing. Thank you. 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 You want a green one? We can do your blue one. No, this is fine. Yeah, leave the pearls on. I'll cut around it. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Doki. Thank you. And you tell me if this hurts. Okay. There we go. And now, incidentally, can you people at home who have not tried this, if you've got new carpet, unless you've got newspaper all over the floor, because it can be a bugger. And let's just. <laughs> Tonight, life uncovered lots of medical and other secrets. We discovered what happened when Sam Neill made love to Meryl Streep, what turned Shirley MacLaine on, what Gloria Estefan found under a nun's habit, what Mark Mitchell did with the doors closed, and how John Farnham felt when he experienced the unkindest cut of all. Might have been just after the operation. What? Oh! The operation? Yes, yeah. Tell us about the operation. I, I had a minor operation. I'm over 40. You can guess what it was. During the album. Yeah, I'm shooting blank. <laughs> What was it? Vasectomy. <laughs> it's done in a minute. I said vasectomy on television. Say it again. What was the... Um... <laughs> and, is it uh... a minor operation? Well, yeah. Though, that's what the guy told me who did Before it. Before you went in. His name was Cleve. <laughs> Dr Cleve? Dr Cleve. Or Mr Cleve. I think, you know, it's called surgeon. more than... Yeah. And, and, uh... Cos I went in and he, and he said, oh, you don't look like the type. Cos I was being really cool, you know. Yeah, Cleve, I'm here and I'm going to have me operation. <laughs> Lovely man. And um, I'm standing there with my trousers down around my knees. He's kind of, and I'm thinking. <laughs> and I actually said, I said, should you kiss me while you're doing this? <laughs> man, so, no, no, no. No. <laughs> no, I actually said it. And and uh, he just gave me a filthy look, you know. Yeah. But but uh, he said, oh, you don't look like the type that's going to leap off at the table at me. So I'll, I'll, we'll do it with a local. And I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So shifted a bit. <laughs> And uh, I'm laying on the table, you know, covered in the sheet with one of them backless things, which is a bit nippy if you're walking yeah. around. It's been a rather attractive little thing. Yeah, yeah, cute, cute little backless number. Yeah. And uh, he said, how do you feel? And Gillian actually got... Oh, maybe I shouldn't tell well, you. Well, Gillian's in there. No, no, Gillian wasn't in there. Gillian's in no, there, no, isn't Gillian, she? Gillian she's Gillian got in me. there. Yeah, she... Oh, she's in there, all right. <laughs> she... No problems whatsoever. <laughs> And she, she actually got me a movie that she thought, you know, the night before, because I was a bit toey about it, the night before, and she got me um, Great Balls of Fire, which... <laughs> <laughs> the last time we talked, we talked about you being an interpreter at Miami Airport. Miami International, yes. Customs and Immigration. And you recounted the particular tale of when a, a, a nun was trying to smuggle a salami through customs. Yes. It was very embarrassing for me, I tell you. The, actually, the, the agriculture man smelled it on her, and... Uh... <laughs> is it, can I ask, is it, is it the practice of Miami agricultural men to smell nuns on the way oh. through? <laughs> this particular nun had a very peculiar aroma about her, and uh, it was very embarrassing because I had to tell her to raise her habit, and uh, <laughs> it was not good. It was not pretty sight, either she had the salami hanging on a rope around her waist. <laughs> And it looked all the world like a monk for a second. Well, <laughs> it's a bit confusing, I would say. Just incidentally, what does a rancid salami smell like? Well, it was not rancid. 
first of all. But uh, it did smell peculiar. Uh, maybe it was the long flight over from Italy. I don't know. Especially the, where it was might have had something. Like that. The, the, uh, it's based. It's what we call a microphone. The uh, sweet little thing, aren't isn't they, it? Yeah. <laughs> it sort of rings That's a lot of bells. Cute. Yeah. Oh, the memory. <laughs> You know, I want to talk about shagging scenes because um, <laughs> I did a movie once called Number One where I had to, you know, simulate nobbing with Alison Stedman. And um, uh, I thought, like, it would be horrendous because I actually don't like people to see me in my undies. I refuse to take my undies off for this scene. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they had a long tracking shot and so I had to... They said, like, I mean, Les Blair was the director, said, OK, Bob, st start shagging now. And, like, you know, and stop, stop, and they take the, you know, the, the old... What's it? The old tape, and they sort of yeah, go yeah, up yeah. to your knob and yeah. go back in together. <laughs> and uh, but they tried. They kept doing it four or five or six times. Well, the first time I did get a stonker actually. But I, <laughs> I had this uh, scene with uh, Meryl Streep once where, where we were doing the business, and and I didn't know her at all. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm on top of him. Meryl, I'm, I'm three inches away from her face, <laughs> and we don't know each other at all. I'm very uh, scared of her because she's uh, Meryl Streep after all and so w when we're shooting the business I, I, I thought the only way I can do this is because it, it would be embarrassing to actually you know use a bit of friction in the <laughs> loins <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to actually grind her so, <laughs> so if, you, if you look at it it's completely unrealistic because I'm sort of going I'm, I'm kind of sort of going like that <laughs> and, 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 and you can tell there's no sort of of that at all. <laughs> so you had so a sperm count. I had a sperm count. I had to go after Corpus Christi, which was the local uh, the local hospital. I, I couldn't go to anywhere. Well, it was a convent. I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> well, I thought it was too because it's, I, I arrived there. At um, unfortunately, my timing was appalling. I arrived at lunch, and um, the uh, the sister and uh, I think that a nun were having lunch behind the, the front desk. And I went in there and I said, look, uh, hello, I'm, I'm here for a... Uh, well, I've got a referral. And I gave her the, the sheet and um, she looked at it. Well, I sort of... <laughs> and um, sort of vanished and came back with a small jar. <laughs> and um, they indicated to someone who came over to take me into the, uh, into the room. Uh, it was a small room uh, with several... <laughs> with some reading material on a table. <laughs> Time life post, <laughs> and there was a uh, there was a picture of um, uh, the late um, uh, pontiff uh, John John Paul the <laughs> first, and I realised that um, there were two doors into this room. I thought if I stretch both my arms out, I can keep both doors shut because <laughs> there weren't locks on the doors. Uh, I was standing there at one point with my arms stretched out, <laughs> with a bottle on the floor. <laughs> 58 calendar thinking this is going to take a long time. <laughs>
the Bucks turn is in progress out in the loading bay. Mookie's having a ten minute. <laughs> Annette's trying on a number of dresses. I therefore, using the power invested in me by the Government of Australia, declare them to be husband and wife, and may they live together with love, <coughs> peace of mind and happiness. Right. <laughs> Who made the first approach, Harry or you? Harry. See, I saw I was swimming, and I saw her walking by the pool. And, and I got out of the pool, and I said, I just want to introduce myself to you. My name's Harry Connick, Jr. She's like, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Not quite. Do you remember the first words he said to you? He just said, hi, I'm Harry Connick, Jr. <laughs> I don't talk like that. <laughs> Why are Frenchmen considered so sexy? What is it about Frenchmen? Frenchmen? Yeah, Frenchmen. Oh, Frenchman is someone who, ah, maybe like Australian also, no. who, likes to, who likes to eat, who likes to drink, who likes to, to go... To, uh... Yeah, I think I know what you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did you guys meet? Uh, Paul Simon told me about uh, this place down in the Caribbean, this island, St. Bart's. I went down there and I met, you know, Christy Brinkley. And uh, I didn't expect to meet anybody. I didn't go with any intention to seeing anybody. You're sure, you've been following around for weeks, Billy. Ever? <laughs> I saw her actually in the in the, the uh, connecting airport. And I'm trying to look like me, yeah. trying to see if she'll recognize. I'm, I'm throwing an album yeah. cover at her, you know, like yeah, that's right. You know, that. <laughs> Nothing. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Are you, do you fall in love with your leading ladies? We uh, do, do you fall in love with your leading ladies? Avec, avec la, cette femme, oui, avec l'actrice, yes. oh, oui, oh, oui, yes. Oh. You do? <laughs> Regularly? No, but, but I, no, I, I didn't know nothing. No, <laughs> no, no, yes, no, 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 He's going all right. You're going all right, Bob? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bobby? Yes. Yeah. Bob? Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's having a good wedding day? Oh, yes. Yep. How, how did you go with the vows? All right. That's fine. <laughs> the, the vows? Oh, the vows. Oh, wow. oh good. Good. Really? Yeah. Your marriage has lasted, uh, well, 57 years, which is almost extraordinary in, in uh, show business terms. Yeah. How did you achieve yeah, that? I've been married about, about uh, 56 years now, mm -hmm. and I've been home three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you achieved it. And uh, the honeymoon night now looms in front of you, Phil? Huh? A big uh, night? Big night. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, uh, you're pretty, getting pretty excited there, Bob, Bobby? Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to pry you, your, you don't want to get personal. I don't want to get personal. So but... let's, no, no, I don't. I don't want to get into your life at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's talk about Michael Hutchins. Uh, <laughs> Have you met Agro before, Jen? We worked together. Have you? We went yes, out we once. Oh. <laughs> Where about did you go? No, no. I don't know, I was in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one year in our late night time slot, we found ourselves pitted against Wimbledon, which was on Channel 9. And uh, the weather was playing havoc on Centre Court. It was raining night after night after night. And this was a godsend for us, and our ratings skyrocketed. But as it turned out, we were having problems of our own. Good evening and welcome to Tonight Live. I'm Cherry Woodesey and the news I have for you is bad. As you saw from those pictures, Tonight Live has been rained out 
I understand it's the first time in the history of Australian television that a Tonight Show has been rained out. The covers have been drawn and the man with the biggest disappointment written all over his face, Steve Beisard. Steve, extremely disappointing. Yeah, it is, uh, Terry. We had a big show lined up tonight. We had uh, some great guests. Well, it is the first time it's happened. We've, we've been lucky. 300-odd shows, uh, never n never any weather problems. I thought this was just some cheap sort of uh, sort of effect, but uh, it is coming down. I've looked at the seats and they are wet. They're, they're wet. They're and, as wet uh, as they get. I thank you for not letting me actually stand. This is slippery underfoot. If I tried to do some comedy here, I could have gone, A over to you, wouldn't I? <laughs> No, none at all. Feel the blade of the knife. Is it real? It's real. <laughs> now watch this. Yeah, and, and nothing happens to the fish. No, 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 the no, no. <laughs> nothing happens to the fish. Oh, no, no. Is that a piece of crap? Are you sure this is? tour here with Jim Rose to lift heavy objects such as uh, breeze blocks and irons. Easy, you say, but can you lift them with your tongue or nipple rings? Prepare... <laughs> <sighs> Prepare to be amazed and revolted by Mr Lifto. Beautiful. He's a genius, a brilliant artist, known all over the world as one of the most complete sideshow marvels in history. Ladies, caution, all ladies, do not try this at home. It's not a breast enhancer at all. One of the most sensitive parts of the body. We'll get to the most sensitive next. Don't rip them out, lift them out. We need you in New South Wales on Wednesday. Oh, Dolly Parton's pissed. Anyway, not to be outdone, some nights we exceeded the bounds of good taste without any help from our guests. Whoa! <laughs> uh, well, they... It's hard to actually tell whether they're working or not, but I thought what we might do is actually... Um, if we could put them on the camera, and then you can see at home whether these X-ray specs, which are actually only $14 plus two, do two bucks posting for two ba three pairs, it's a terrific value, if we whack it on a... Um, if we whack it on one of the cameras here... Jack, can I whack it on your camera here? Thanks, Jack. I'll just whack it on this camera here. 
and uh, we can just see, can we just uh, whack it there, see what happens, and I'll just grab the camera here, and uh, th thanks, Pete, and uh, <laughs> just uh, get the camera, and uh, if we can just swing it, I'll just swing it around here on the band and see if we can pick up the band here. Uh, this, th wow, this is something else, uh, and over, of course, <laughs> these things are incredible, this is amazing. Uh, I don't know if you're getting. I don't know if you're getting this at home. I'll just. If we're getting this at home. Pete, swing the monitor around, and I'll see if you can pick this up. Yeah, it works on the telly. Um, let's try the audience here. We'll just swing it around on the audience, and see if it actually works on the audience. Uh, this is incredible. I have never seen anything like this. Um, so uh, we'll just um, take these uh, glasses off. Uh, I think. I think we've. Uh, our next act has been described by Tony Barber as a musical trollop. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny, Simon. The, uh, he didn't feel that happy about it. <laughs> Harry M. Miller, like a young Graham Kennedy. <laughs> And the Sydney Morning Herald, a cross between Iggy Pop and an oily Tom Jones. <laughs> I'm fed up of going and see film where it's, I feel it's the Reader's Digest version of a story. I think the audience is willing to take risks. And I know the film is extremely fucking violent. But... <laughs> The royal family, do they mean anything to you, Oliver? Yeah, and it's just as well we haven't got a king on the throne, otherwise he might have kicked shit out of you. <laughs> You've got a poem for us, but I won't ask you to do it Don't you for me. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, That's Oliver. That's quite nice, I quite enjoyed it. You'll touch me, Steve. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, Oliver. I'm sorry, Bob, it's still on with us. Oh, I'm gonna go and have a wee-wee. <laughs> <laughs> Did you shoot a South African farmer in the hand? Yes. <laughs> this uh, gentleman over there was uh, was uh, was a was a boor, and he said, "I'm fantastic at shooting, Oliver." <laughs> so, would you like a cup of coffee and a pint of whiskey? So I thought, oh dear, oh, dear. I thought he said. Every morning when I get up to have a piss, <laughs> he said, I look out of my piss hole window and I see a snake. And the other morning I shot the bugger straight through the eye. So I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was in the British army. <laughs> I said, being a medic, never having picked up a weapon in dispute. And so I said, you see that peg down there? And he had a washing line way down at the end of the garden. I said... <laughs> and the bugger went... <laughs> So then he said, that's fantastic. I said, that's absolutely nothing. I said, you hold a fag in your hand. <laughs> so we have the 60 second clock. And Sir so Joe, I just want very quick sure. monosyllabic responses to, to, the, to the words that I'm going to suggest to yes, you. Yes. I just want your immediate thoughts. Mm. Your time starts now. Yes. John Hewson. Well, he's new at the game, and I think he'll be able to... Stop the clock. Stop the clock. <laughs> very, very short responses, if we could possibly... Oh, was that too long? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was by, about, <laughs> by about three sentences, roughly. <laughs> but, OK, so yeah. well, let's start the clock again. Uh, peanuts. They nice to eat. Yep. Uh, Yarn event? Not so good. Okay. <laughs> Yapoon. Interesting place to holiday. Longreach? Uh, yes, good cattle centre. Uh, Les, Les Tees? 
great, great guy. Cane toad? Not so good. Yeah, young event? <laughs> Worse than them. <laughs> Alan Bond? Well, he's done a lot. Uh, pineapple? Nice to eat. Fossils? Well, they're interesting. Uh, Lambada dance? Well, it, for some it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nelson Mandela? Well, he's a dark man. Stop the clock. Is there a limited number of roles for... I mean, there obviously are, but two limited number of roles for black female actors? Am I black? <laughs> Sydney was exciting. Hmm? Sydney was like... Architects took a lot of acid and just said, we want to put everything everywhere. Let's just <laughs> have pointy buildings and round buildings and we'll just put them everywhere. <laughs> And nobody can stop us! <laughs> and you come in, you're okay. not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You say, excuse me, uh, madam, or whoever it was. I'm a guy. Well, <laughs> in the afternoon... this sale. Well, in Wales, <laughs> in Wales, there are not too many men home in the afternoon. Not right, then, anyway. Right. So there would be a lady who would answer the door and say, excuse me, madam, I'm, I'm around this area at the moment demonstrating Electrolux vacuum cleaners. Mm -hmm. You're under no obliga obligation to buy. Uh, in fact, I will come in and, and give you a free demonstration if you would like. And I'll also show you the vacuum cleaner. No, it was... Uh, <laughs> no, it was... So it was I mean, <laughs> when I'm at home, I listen to Sinatra albums sometimes, you know, so I mean, it varies, it's across the board. Yeah, really. I'm a Sinatra buff. What's your favourite Sinatra song? Well, I, my, my favourite album is actually the Live at the Sands count with Count Basie. That's my favourite uh, Oh, yeah, favorite fabulous album, album. yeah. <laughs> Dub the double album, the black one. <laughs> yeah, great album. Well, I've got it on... <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. taking a piss out of me, eh? <laughs> Fifteen years of, of not doing that, of just playing to half a dozen people that sort of throw bottles at you. You've got to go through. <laughs> no, you've got twelve thousand throwing bottles at you. <laughs> you take the piss out of me, Steve. Was that whole myth about the home, the home video thing? That was, uh, you know, what a beat up. It must have been a lookalike. <laughs> exactly, because it's not a bad video. <laughs> did, did you film that? Did you just come in as well? Now, now, now. I, I plead the fifth. I, pl I plead the fifth on that one. All right, OK. <laughs> Did you turn the camera on? <laughs> yeah, so Rob Lowe's in the film. Uh, what was it like working with Rob? Uh, great. He's um, a really nice guy. He's really funny. And uh, he has a tremendous sense of, sense of humour about himself. I mean, you're, you're on Australian um, television. You could say anything, really. You can expose him. I mean, is the guy an arsehole? Be frank. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. That is brilliant. This is, this is the greatest, the greatest show I've ever been on, and you are now officially my hero of television Thank worldwide. You. We love you. Please welcome James and Diane with tonight's Nudie Hobby Scrabble. <laughs> the game of Scrabble is a word game which is fun for all ages. Players must select seven letters at random, then attempt to make up words across and down, similar to a crossword puzzle. The bigger the word, the more points you score. A game for two to four players, Scrabble is a lot of fun. And believe me, the only limit to the game is the English language itself. James tonight is forming the word and Diane is forming the word Scrabble. Scrabble. Why don't you have a game today? And that was tonight's edition of Nudie Hobbies. Tomatoes hurled at Dr John Hewson. And uh, to assure us that the ALP is in no way associated with that, we have uh, with us a member of the ALP in the audience tonight. Uh, uh, isn't that right? The ALP no way associated Senator Graham Richardson, who's in the audience. <laughs> and uh, thanks, Richo. It's a relief to know that the campaigns will continue in a civilised manner because um, one of the... Uh, 
one of the... Hey, Rich, just cut that out. Richo, Richo, just... Richo! Just Richo, just cut... Rip. Anyway, it's uh, obviously... Uh, <laughs> so you... Uh, <laughs> that's not how we rehearsed it, Kevin. <laughs> We seem to have some Rotary Exchange students in the front row. Yeah. What's, the, um, what's the name of the... Uh, you're from Japan, are you? Uh, which part of Japan? Um, in Hokkaido. Do you know? Sorry? In, in Hokkaido. Hokkaido? Yes. Ah, yes, I know Hokkaido. Oh. And, and your name, of course, is... I'm Shiho, but not Shito. <laughs> This is, this is what your name was in Fagu. <laughs> I'm going to take you back a few years now. Literally? No, no. no, no. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. what, what goes through your head, Nigel? You look at that tape, it takes you back many years now. What, what, what goes through your head? Well, I was thinking about, you know, back at the hotel, they've got these little mints that they put <laughs> on the pillar, and I was wondering, who makes those? Looking back at all this nonsense has been quite a surreal experience for me. It's like watching scenes from some half-remembered dream or nightmare. Well, they were great days. We had a fantastic time mucking around five nights a week. And when Tonight Live ended, I remember walking away from the spotlight, or possibly running is a better description, and, and was gone as quickly as I'd arrived. In fact, that's just what I'm going to do now, night. Now, one I thought was frankly a brilliant idea, they've axed again the bleeped out show. Have a look at this. Hi, oh, Christina, how you been? Oh, get visor. Why would you care? You call this a thing tonight, Joe? What a load of book. I've got something in my hand here. Yeah, stick it up your ass, yeah. <laughs> Christine's latest novel. I stayed up all last night reading this, and Christine, this must have taken forever to put together. You f***ing lie, you sucker. How would you know? You haven't read it. Of course it took a long time. It's a f***ing novel, you idiot. Have you read any of uh, Christine's works, uh, Glenn? Of course I have. <laughs> Christine, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate that. Get. Benny, will you be coming back onto the show again soon? Go and get. We're going to take a break. Back with more after this. <laughs> I ask you, despite what the network says, we had some real winners there. Uh, which one was your favourite there, Merv? Well, I'll be if I know, Steve. <laughs> this must have taken a bit of time to put together. Of course it did, you bum. You Oh, pip squeak, you idiot. Of course, show. She's got a point there. Pip squeak. Well, I just uh, pull back a bit. You're getting into it a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a Granada production in association with a Seven Network. John Deke speaking. Jason, how are you? <laughs> Good, mate. How are you? So, Jason. Uh... Great suit, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, uh, you borrow that off Noddy, did you? Sorry. <laughs> yeah.